In this video, we're going to take a look at what recent science has to say about kettlebell training. Grüezi Petran, Gregory von Lebestag here. Before we dive into the scientific articles, I have two aspects that I want to mention first. The first thing is we have a clear limitation. Most of these studies, if not all of them, use only a 16 kilogram as a standard and most of them use reps and sets. We have one study that is very particular with the for time method, which we advocate. And second, I believe there is a reason why kettlebell research seems like such a wasteland. Politics seem to be involved because kettlebells are Russian. And most research goes into Olympic lifting because it has a higher status according to some of our subscribers who shared this notion that kettlebell training stems from the working class back in the day and that's probably the reason why we have such a small scope of scientific articles. So let's jump into the research. The first thing that we're going to look at is the following question. Can kettlebell swings prevent knee injuries? In order for us to understand what knee injuries may cause, we want to look at this muscle briefly. It is the semitendinosus. It is part of the hamstring muscle group. And if you have a strength, a strong semitendinosus, this has the potential to prevent causes that could lead to knee injuries. And when you do kettlebell swings, science says that you're able to trigger the semitendinosus 20% more than hamstring curls. So we could say according to this basis that maybe kettlebell swings can help you prevent knee injuries better than a typical strength training machine. Now the second study that we're going to look at is what muscles are active during the hand-to-hand -hand swing are the most active and here they talked about the one-arm swing but we can talk about the hand-to-hand -hand swing because it's pretty much the same. They said that 76% comes from the glute max and 70% comes from the glute medius when it comes to maximum voluntary contraction. So this means that your Glutes are working the most when you're working with the kettlebell swing. Now in study number three, they were talking about kettlebell training and back pain. And this is something that we see from experience that most people improve their back pain, at least subjectively, when it comes to kettlebell training, when they start kettlebell training. So what they found is that subjective pain decreased in the group that trained three times per week with kettlebells versus the group that did nothing. You can probably decrease your back pain by just starting to exercise and starting to lift or starting to train, starting to walk, just to just be more active. As we can now tie in this study that we talked about before that it activates most of our glutes, we can say that most people have weak glutes because they're sitting on a desk all day and this is one of the primary muscles that is involved in muscular imbalances that can lead to back pain. So if we get our glutes stronger, this can lead to the fact that we can definitely decrease the back pain that most of us experience in one part of their lives. But now we talk about kettlebell training and calorie burn and fat loss. What they found in the study is that 12 minutes non-stop kettlebell swing burns about 160 calories, which I believe is a lot. If you do a typical traditional strength training bout about 45 minutes to 60 minutes, you burn, let's say about 100 to 120 calories. So you can do the same, if not more, with 12 minutes of kettlebell training. What they say is that the participants trained at a 65% of the maximal aerobic capacity. And at this intensity, you burn the greatest percentage of calories from fat. Now this study specifically burned most calories from carbohydrates and not fat, which I believe is easily explained. In this study, you had guys who were fit but never touched a kettlebell before, and they did 12 minutes of kettlebell training, so kettlebell swing. So I don't care how fit, how strong you are, if it's the first time that you're picking up a kettlebell and you do a 12 minute swing, I guarantee you it'll burn you because you don't know the power switch method, you don't know how to loosen your body, you don't know what muscles to, to give tension and what muscles to relax. So I believe these people were burned and that's probably the reason why they burn more carbohydrates than fat. I believe if you're more proficient, more advanced with kettlebell training, you get more the feeling, you can even pick up a heavier kettlebell, then I believe you get into that perfect zone where you probably burn more fat than carbohydrates. 
I also believe that you have to add to the fact that if you never picked up the kettlebell, then you have to learn a lot. You have to learn the movement. You have to think about it a lot. You really have to engage your brain and your brain consumes a lot of carbohydrates. So we can say probably these are the reasons why the participants in that study burn more calories from carbohydrates than from fat. Study number five was kettlebell swings versus treadmill running and they wanted to find out how we can compare the metabolic demand of two-handed kettlebell swings with a treadmill run. Now they found out that treadmills burn 50% more calories than kettlebell swings which seems understanding because treadmill running can be very intense and jogging can be very intense. I believe it's one of the most intense bouts of training that you can actually do. If we go a step further, I believe treadmill running can cause problems with your joints and treadmill running can become boring, whereas the kettlebell offers you a great selection of exercises no matter how banged up you are, no matter how your joints feel. And if your joints are a little tricky, you can still do some some kettlebell training. So that's one of the benefits. And the other benefit is that kettlebell training is not boring. Kettlebell training will demand a lot for your brain. So that's where the fun probably comes in. Having that said, I believe there's so many benefits that the kettlebell can give you that the treadmill cannot, that the kettlebell can be a better tool for you to lose fat and burn calories and that on a continuous and long time frame. Final study was six weeks of weightlifting versus six weeks of kettlebell training. And what they found was that the weightlifting group improved their squat about three times as much as the kettlebell group. And the weightlifting group was superior probably because of selective loading. And so here's one of the limitations that should be avoided in this kind of setting. I believe the kettlebell group should have the same selective loading when it comes to progressive load with weights than the weightlifting group to have this proper result. I believe in this case, it's a little skewed. So there you have it. I got these studies from a YouTube video from the NSCA. you find the link in the description. Check it out if you want to. If you like the video, like it. If you wanna see more of this kettlebell stuff, subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.